E39 source, Kenan here with the 2001 E39 525 and today we're going to be taking a look at replacing your alternator side uh, belt pulleys. Uh, we're going to be replacing the belt is right down there. Uh, it's telltale sign for that being wrong is you get a loud, very high pitched squeaking noise. Uh, it almost sounds like a blowing noise but really it is uh, these belts squeaking and it's very easy to tell uh, when they're shot. Um, so we're going to be replacing uh, those here shortly. The first step to replace those is to remove the fan shroud. The first thing you're really going to want to do is actually remove the fan. It is right down there. You can see the uh, the fan clutch. Uh, the you're going to need, it would be very easy to do this if you have the fan clutch tools. I believe that's a 32 or 34 millimeter bolt on there. Uh, you can pick those up on eBay uh, for about $35. They could become very useful for owning these cars. Um, as I found out, so definitely look at picking one of those up. But that is reverse threaded, so you torque it towards the uh, driver's side of the car um, to get that bolt off. And then uh, once that's off, tuck it into the fan shroud itself, and then you can begin working to disconnect that. What you're going to do, there's an electrical connection down here. You're going to pinch and pull just to disconnect that. You have a pop rivet here, and another pop rivet located here. And then you have the expansion tank, but one step at a time, uh, we'll get to that. The first thing to remove the expansion tank, you're going to pinch here and then you can push the expansion tank off to the side, but we'll go over how to disconnect the expansion tank here momentarily. So uh, we went ahead and removed the uh, radiator hose out of the top right of the radiator here. It's got a little metal clip, you just get a flat blade under that, pull it up, wiggle it out. You're going to lose some coolant, get some shop towels, uh, don't do it over your hardwood floor and you'll be fine. The other end of that goes in here uh, around the water pump area, so it's the same deal. You got a metal tab, screwdriver, pop that hose off and uh, it looks like that. We've got the fan and the fan clutch uh, disconnected with, uh, with the tool. Sometimes that's easy, sometimes it's not. Uh, you may need a breaker bar for persuasion, a piece of wood to counter hold the other piece, whatever works, make it work. Um, then we used a, a fluid transfer pump right over there to uh, pump out the coolant in the expansion tank or as much of it as we could get out. Uh, we unscrewed the bleeder valve, bleeder screw right here and um, Kenan's going to tell you what's next. So next thing you're going to need to remove this clip, which I'm having a little bit of trouble with, so I'm going to have to fiddle around with that. I don't know if it's ever been off the car. Once you do that, the uh, expansion tank is going to rotate back. There are two little pinions that stick down into the fan shroud. Um, there, is a, there is a hose attached to the bottom and one attached to the top that runs across the front of the radiator. The one that runs across the top is going to have a, uh, a one-use uh, pressure fit clamp. Obviously you can't use it again, so what I would recommend doing is replacing it with one inch standard uh, screw down uh, hose clamps. It's much easier, E39s are known for having cooling issues, so you'll probably need to be taking it off again. That's what I would recommend switching to, um, to just make your life easier down the line. Once you have that done and you disconnect, um, you've disconnected everything we mentioned before, uh, at that point you then can pull the fan shroud out of the car. It will lift straight up with your fan tucked into the fan shroud. Just be careful not to catch that on the, the engine and be careful not to drop it, especially if your fins on the fan are brittle. Once you have it undone, here's what it looks like. You can begin to see that pressure fit clamp there. You can buy these and you can buy the OEM ones and put it back on if you're a concourse person and the specific hose clamps matter to you. Um, <laughs> but if not, you can just go ahead, we'll go through how to, uh, how to disconnect that here in a moment. Again, obviously not a whole lot of room and very difficult to see because inline sixes are so well designed. Um, but down there, there are two prongs uh, that do stick in. Once we get it out, we'll show you. If you look down here, um, you can't, you'll be able to feel it if you feel the bottom, there's the hose, uh, it's down there. I'm pretty sure you won't be able to see it with the lighting in here. Um, but yep, we're ready to uh, lift up on the fan shroud. So you can see everything moves. Here is one fan. Let me set that off to the side. It actually still looks pretty decent for being an Ohio car. So once you have the fan, fan shroud at this kind of curious angle, you've got some hoses that run underneath it here. They are exactly like your upper and lower coolant uh, hoses. They have two clamps, so you just simply take a flat head and release them. These clamps do not come all the way off. They remain captive with the hoses. 
And I don't know if these have ever been off of the car. They feel okay, so I would assume they have. Okay, well, then you just kind of have to wrestle with it. Okay. That was a lot larger struggle than it should have been. But there's that one, the same thing on this side. Um, this one you can kind of leave connected to the fan shroud, it connects right down here. Uh, this one you can do this sort of the same. This one you can disconnect um, and just kind of set off to the side. But then we can move on to this little hose here that connects to the other side. As I was explaining, it connects right here. An expansion tank and right here to the top of the radiator. All right, well after that nightmare, uh, I'm really glad I bought an M5 because they're a lot easier to work on. But what I found out, so you just connect this hose from here and of course set it down there. There's another hose that plugs into the bottom of the fan shroud. If I can pan over to there. You can see where it all plugs in down there. There's also an electric sensor, which I did not know about. It was down there. This is one of those that you just pinch and pull. It is going to be very dirty like this, so make sure you clean it very well before you plug it back in. And you're going to, of course, lose a lot of coolant, but anytime you work on a BMW cooling system, it's going to be a mess and you're going to lose a ton. But anyway, all that stuff out of the way and off to the side. Uh, Ryan found out the, the best way to remove these, uh, these clamps is to take a pair of wire cutters or something that's very strong, stick it in there and just cut the top and then kind of work them off. And again, I'm going to replace that, at least that one with a band clamp because it's easier. But now you can see what we're looking at. So what we're going to be replacing, we're going to be replacing this bearing here, and we're replacing that one there, um, and also really, the, and then the belt itself. That's really all we needed to replace. This, this is the one in my case that's making a lot of noise. This one also tends to make a lot of noise. I bought a replacement for it and I have it, so might as well do it. All right guys, so looking down into this array of pulleys, the first thing you wanna do is make sure you have a diagram of how these belts go. Um, if you just type in BMW M54 belt diagram, there's one that will come up. All the inline sixes I believe are the same. So it shouldn't really be an issue. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take a T50 Torx bit. There should be a cover here. Oh, my, in my case, there is not. You're gonna insert it there and simply apply pressure and watch this. Oh, look how nice that is. That just comes right in and you're able to slide this belt off all the pulleys. So as you can see, mine is getting kind of worn. All those cracks there is definitely time to replace it. You just work this off of the pulley, release the tensioner, and that's it. It really is that easy to get that off. You can throw that in the bin. So here are the culprits that are making your noise. Listen to that. That's no bueno. And then this one, that's definitely where the noise is coming from. It just, these wear out over time and that's what happens. So that has been your culprit. Okay, so these bolts are just threaded on there normally. This one happens to be a 16 millimeter. The other one was this uh, T50. Just Bang them off like normal bolts. This bolt is really long, as you can see. It goes all the way into the alternator housing. Uh, so it's very long, and this is very rusty. Um, so it took a little bit, of do little bit of doing to get it off, but uh, yeah, you can really hear that these were really shot. Okay, so with your shiny new pulley, oh, that is so satisfying. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little knob on the back here that will fit into a groove right here on the alternator. Make sure you line those up. It'll help you orient it properly. And you go to reinstall it and then just start reinstalling it like you would any other bolt. Um, and just torque it down. We'll look at the torque specs here in a minute and give you an idea. Um, but it should be pretty tight. Most people I've read just say hand tight, um, but if we can find a torque spec, we'll put it in an annotation here. So routing the few belts, again, just follow a diagram at some point of uh, some kind. Make sure that uh, the ribbed part of the belt does line up all the way along before you put tension on the belt. Obviously, if it's not lined up, the first time you go to start the car, it will shred the belt and you will be looking at more work to get back to this point again. Uh, also, I bought these caps. Again, a full list of all the part numbers uh, used for this job will be down below. As usual, Ryan and I replaced all of the bolts. Um, this cap was missing, so that bolt was nice and rusty. Same story here. 
and that one was fine. Uh, so I replaced those just because why not? Fresh bolts. Uh, so now they have their covers on and everything is ready to go back together. Obviously, we're going to have to add coolant to this car. It is all over <laughs> the belly pan. Uh, as always, when I tend to work on cooling systems, they make a mess. Um, now that, of course, will entail bleeding the system. And what that means is you, you fill up the expansion, take as much as you can. And then you start the car, turn the heat all the way on. The level will go down, pour more in, open the bleeder screw. I'll go through that whole process with you. And uh, it's been done in other videos as well. But as far as the belts go, as far as the pulleys go, we're all done. All right, so a little bit of time later, we have everything buttoned back up again. Make sure all of your hoses are plugged in. Make sure to plug in that electric lead down there as well as that one. The way you need to uh, top your coolant up, first thing you do, obviously pour coolant into the, uh, into the expansion tank. Then go ahead and start your car, turn on the heat, set it all the way to as high as it will go. I believe in this car the temperature is 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Yes it is. And uh, it's really hot in there. Uh, and then come back here and lift that lid off. Immediately the level is going to drop really fast. So just start pulling coolant in, bring the level back up. Once the level is up the top, tighten this. Then open your bleeder screw. Just turn it you know, uh, counterclockwise. Let all the bubbles come up. Once it stops bubbling and it's just coming out straight liquid, screw it back down again. Open your, uh, open your filler cap, top it up. Let the car run for a little while. Again, leave the heat on, full blast. And then take the cap off again, check the level. If it's good, fine, if, add, if not, add more. And then close it up and you should be good to go. Run the car for a while, keep an eye on the coolant level. Um, if, it, if you have high OBC, it'll tell you, ding, ding, check coolant um, if you are losing any. But outside of that, you should be done. As you can hear, much, much more much uh, quieter now. So that is, uh, that is really nice. Uh, relatively inexpensive thing to do. Uh, again, part numbers will be down below. I'm very happy with that. Uh, car is running great. Um, we also just finished the valve cover gasket and uh, no leaks there. That's the other thing with coolant. Make sure you check for leaks everywhere. Check for where all the hoses plug in here. There are two on that expansion tank, obviously. And then check all your connections here. Check where it goes into the thermostat there. Just make sure there are no leaks, and if there aren't any, you're good to go. So thanks very much for watching, guys. Uh, make sure to rate, comment, and subscribe. If you have any questions, leave them down below, and we'll be sure to get back to you. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.